Morning. Well, it's still morning. I've got uh, 23 minutes to preach a 45 minute sermon, so I hope it works out okay. Anybody have anything on the stove? Good. We'll turn your Bibles to once again to Ephesians chapter 6. Will you please? Today I want to deal with the sword of the Spirit. We've already seen that truth and sincerity uh, is our girdle. That righteousness has to be our breastplate. Resolution as the greaves or armor on our legs. Faith must be our shield. And salvation must be our helmet. And the Word of God now is the sword of the Spirit. The sword that's used, to, that's described here, was using a, a, a Greek word to describe a Latin, I mean, a, a Roman sword, which is a defensive and an offensive weapon. It was a smaller sword. It wasn't larger. It wasn't longer necessarily. It was longer than a dirk, but shorter than a large uh, sword. That this sword was kept at a soldier's side. It's about twice the length of the blade that I have in front of me. This is a uh, about this long. Shaped the edge on a sharp edge on both sides. I'm being careful. You can shave with this knife. So, on both edges, it had a uh, on both sides had a sharp edge. It was about this long, and it's called a moxiron, and it's used by uh, by the soldiers for close in hand combat. It's used. Uh, most people just think of a blade as something you just cut with or or strike with, but an actual blade is a real science of use. There's a lot of different move motions with it. Strikes you can be done as well as jabs and blocks and other things. So it's kind of a, a deadly weapon on in close combat. They kept this sword close uh, at hand all the time. So it was always visible and available to him, and he was well trained in its use. You can imagine what it would be like to take just a knife like this sharp on one <laughs> side, as sharp as it is, and, and cut yourself accidentally would be pretty devastating. So you had to be well trained in how to use this blade so that you didn't hurt yourself. The idea was to defeat an enemy. Amen? Amen. So the Roman soldier was trained very carefully. So he practiced at it daily uh, and often for hours at a time. And I can remember when I was a cop, we were given back in those days a, an old Smith uh, revolver. That's the old days, I guess. You want to go back that far? That wasn't a single shot, though. It was a double action revolver. And I remember going to the Mariloma Range outside of Lancaster and sitting down, uh, going up the range and shooting a hundred dollars worth of ammo every month for the first six months, wad cutters, to be proficient in my, with the use of my weapon because you don't want to carry something you don't know how to use properly. And the soldier here at this time was very acute about his uh, preparation for warfare. His life depended upon his use of his sword and the soldiers around him as well. So he practiced individually but he also uh, took part, uh, practice with a team of soldiers that would wield their swords as a group. Not just in the, you're not just by yourself on the battlefield, you're with a group of people. So the sword itself was effective, but it was not effective in battle unless he was adept at using it wisely. No tool, no uh, implement of war is really valuable to someone if they don't know how to use it. Now, again, when I was a cop in Lancaster, there was an incident where a police officer was involved in a shooting. A passerby decided he would help. So he picked up the shotgun from the police vehicle, the sheriff's department vehicle, to assist the officer. And when he pulled the trigger, nothing happened because he didn't have a round in the chamber and the safety was on. So unless you know how to use the weapon, it really isn't going to be a benefit to you. And a sword is especially this way. The sword is thought of by a sword fighter as an extension of the arm. It's not just a tool at the end of your hand, it's an extension of your whole body. And if you think this way, it becomes more of a, a greater fighting tool. So it's not just swinging a, a sharp blade. It involves strategy, coordination of movement, proper footwork, intricate, spontaneous movement, uh, and also great stamina. Very tiring fighting for your life. But the sword of the spirit that's dealt with here in Romans, even though it's a term used to describe a Roman soldier's uh, sword is really the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Now we don't have to, this I think if I carry this around, most people wouldn't be bothering me. Uh, as far as if I just had this out in the open, like this, say, talking to people, you know. 
How you doing? They're probably not going to be coming close to me because they think I'm a nutcase. Um, and also, I uh, probably have lots of police cars knocking on my door everywhere I went. So it would be kind of a dangerous thing to be carrying around. But uh, I have, in the past, been challenged by people on the street during preach street preaching, and a guy threatened to, uh, to beat me up. And I took out my New Testament and began to tell him how to go to heaven. Uh, and he left. That was my sword for the day. He didn't want to hear that. So I think that the Bible is a great tool. It's a spiritual weapon. It's a powerful weapon. And it's used in conjunction, obviously, with the other pieces of armor, especially the helmet of salvation and prayer. And there are certain things about this uh, using a spiritual warfare that I think are really important. So I want to read this passage one more time in verse 16 and 17. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. We pray, Lord God, that you'd help us to understand your word, maybe see it from a different perspective, and see the importance of the word of God in our own lives. In Christ's name, amen. Well, just like a Roman soldier, I made some analogies, and I want to share them with you. First of all, I think that the Christian soldier should keep his sword close at hand. Now, we can't always carry a Bible with us. I remember when we first started visiting people as a pastor, I carried a big Bible like this, a big black Bible. People got really nervous, so I started carrying a New Testament, and then you took out the New Testament, it didn't seem as, like, as big a sword. So they were a little less concerned, but it was still effective because the New Testament obviously is very powerful. But we're supposed to keep our Bible near to us. If it's not physically in our presence, where does it have to be? You tell me. In our mind. So we, we meditate on the Word of God. We memorize the Word of God. We engraft it into our lives. So it becomes so real to us. It's the first thing that comes to our mind in warfare, spiritual warfare. A Christian soldier need to keep his sword close at hand. I say, let me suggest to you, since Jesus is the very Word of God Himself, John 1, 1, that we walk in His presence, that we spend our lives and our day in His presence. Jesus said, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. I will never leave you nor forsake you. And whatever the context is in making these statements, it's always that He's going to be with us. We're not necessarily walking around thinking, I'm with Him. But we need to just think differently. He is with me. I'm never out of His presence. I walk in the personal power and presence of Christ from day to day. When I know his word, I know him better. I'm strengthened in my life. I'm allowed by God to experience his power and strength. I'm allowed to have victory. So when I go to warfare with the devil, you need to have the word of God in hand. Spend time in the word of God. I'm going to ask a question which I don't want you to answer. How much time do you spend in your Bible every day? Answer to yourself, how much time do I spend in my Bible every day? How much time do you think is important for you to spend in your Bible every day? If the Word of God is going to be something that's in our heart and mind, how does it get there? Is the Bible going to be just automatically in our mind? I wish that we could lay down at night and then we could just kind of lay our, our Bible put under our pillow and by process of osmosis, all of that information would be transferred to us. But I have to tell you, it just doesn't work that way. You actually have to study. And sometimes you don't even have to study. If you read it over and over again, it'll be on your mind like a song. Now, the other day, I think it was Tuesday, last uh, Tuesday morning, I turned on my radio and there was a song that was on the radio, and it was a, a secular song. And I couldn't get that song out of my mind almost the whole week. It happened to me the week before. You know, uh, I can never remember the name of the song, I keep asking Mary, but we, we tried to write some new words to it. But every time we sing, every time I woke up in the middle of the